Hey everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. We have another high-end release coming out tomorrow. It is Tops Tier 1. And the question on every collector's mind is, is this a set that I should buy into or should I pass? Well, it's time to find out in this One Cent Sports Cards 2021 Tops Tier 1 Set Guide and Review. We flipped the calendar to May, and with that comes the release of 2021 Tops Tier 1, a high-end set coming out early in the season. And what we're trying to get to in this set guide in review is the one cent sensational set ranking. What is that, you ask? Well, let me explain it. First of all, it is the most in-depth ranking system you're going to find anywhere on the internet. We break the set down into 10 different categories everything from cost value to card quality to the auto checklist and everything in between in each one of those categories is worth one to ten points one being the lowest ten being the highest then what we do is we take each of those category points add them all up and give the set a one to five star rating which is that chart you see over on the left to find out how good this set really is then we'll even compare the set to last year's 2020 set to see if the set is improving or if it's not improving. And then finally, we'll compare Tops Tier 1 to all of the other 2021 sets that have been released so far this card collecting season. So one more thing before we begin. If you like these set guides and reviews, be sure to give me a thumbs up because that is the best way to interact with the channel and let YouTube's algorithms know that this is valuable content. The other thing, be sure to subscribe so you can get all of the set guides and see all of them as we do these throughout the 2021 card collecting season. And if you want to be the first to see them, be sure to hit the bell notification so you can be notified as soon as these set guides come out. So what are we going to cover off on on this set guide and review? First, we'll start with the set highlights, the 10,000 foot view of what Tops Tier 1 has to offer. Then we'll dig a little deeper, go into the buying formats that you can get this in. We'll cover off on the key cards, what the different parallels are, what the different relics are, what the different autos are. Tons of them available in Tops Tier 1. And then I'll even tell you which teams you should be targeting in breaks. Then I go to my opinion part of the review, go over what I believe the set positives are and what the negatives are. And that's what brings us to the one cent sensational set ranking. And we will cover off on all of the set rankings to date. So let's dig in. Tops 2021 Tier 1 is a high-end hit-driven set and it features past and present greats in the game. It's in its 11th year of production, started back in 2011. And what's interesting about Tier 1 is there really isn't a base set checklist. Every card that you're going to get is a hit. It is only available in hobby formats, so it is not something you're going to find at your Walmart. And all you get in a box is three cards. But in those three cards, you're guaranteed to get two autos and a relic. The set does heavily feature autographed relics, and there are rookies, current stars, and retired greats featured throughout the set, so you're not going to find any prospects in this set. All of the autos that you get will be on card or on relic. What do I mean by on relic? Well, there's a new autographed bat relic set called Perfect Contact autographed bats where the signature is directly on the game used bat relic so a very cool set there for parallels you're looking at bronze silver and gold autograph parallels that are available throughout many of the various autos that you can find in this set also there are cut signatures and cut signature relics available in tops tier one this year so what are the different buying formats well 
First, you can get yourself a hobby case. That's going to have 12 boxes in a case. Again, it comes with one pack per box. That's got three cards per pack. So there's only 36 total cards in a case. The current price on that, about $2,325. Your cost per card, $64.58. But you are guaranteed to get 24 autographs. 12 relics and one guaranteed tier one auto which is a case hit if you don't have north of two thousand dollars sitting around you can always get yourself a hobby box there's one pack per box three cards per pack so three total cards cost you about 195 bucks so your cost per card on that 65 bucks you get two autographs and you get one relic so what are the key cards? Well, first, let's cover off on the key rookies. Now, these are going to be the breakout autos. Every one of these would be signed. And we've got Alec Bohm featured. Christian Pache is featured. Dylan Carlson off to a great start in the 2021 season. Joe Adele is in there. Mr. Jake Cronenworth is in there as well. We have Cabrian Hayes, which we saw on the last slide. Uh, Ryan Mountcastle is there, and the Dodgers' Zach McKinstry is also available, along with a lot of other autos. I'm just checking off on a few of the key rookies here. Then for the parallels, the autos, the inserts, relics, stuff like that, there are parallel ink autos, which we covered off on a little bit. And then there's the prodigious patch autos, which is going to be a big patch with an auto on it. There's the breakout autos. Those are the ones that are feature many of the rookies. There's the clear one autos. And we have cut signature relics. So not only do you get a cut signature, there's a relic that goes along with that. There's also the dual auto tier one relic book cards. Just amazing cards there. Plenty of them available uh, in short print runs, obviously. And then there is the next level autos. We're going to cover off on what all of these are here in a few minutes. Then there is the Perfect Contact Auto Bat Relics. Those are the ones where they are signed directly on the bat. And we have the Tier 1 Bat Knob Relics and Autos. Very cool cards there. We have the Tier 1 Uniform Button Relics. Literally a button from the uniform. So, what are the parallels and variations? Well, not many to cover off on here. The auto parallels, you can get a bronze ink auto numbered to 25, a silver ink auto numbered to 10, and a gold ink, which is going to be a one-of-one -one hit. You can see what the Ronald Acuna Jr. looks like over there on the right. So, what are all the different relics? Well, like we said, there's the prodigious patches. There's going to be 50 cards of those. They're each numbered to 10 or less, and they do have a parallel, which is a platinum one of one. There's the tier one bat knobs, which have 100 cards, and they are all one of ones. You can see what those look like with the Fernando Tatis over there on the right. Then there's the Tier 1 Legend Relics. This is going to feature a lot of Hall of Famers. Um, there's 22 cards in that, each numbered to 199 or less. You can get parallels of a dual patch numbered to 25 and a triple patch numbered to 1 of 1. Then we have the Tier 1 Limited Lumber. That is going to have 100 cards as well, and each of those are numbered to 1 of 1. And you've got the tier one relics, 127 cards, probably the ones you're going to find most often in the boxes that you're opening up. They're each numbered to 399 or less, and there is parallel dual patch to 25 and a triple patched one of one. We also have the tier one uniform button relics. That's a 35 card set. They're each going to be numbered to five. Then we get to our autographs. So first, we have the breakout autographs, 117 cards, each numbered to 299 or less. There's parallel of the bronze ink, silver ink, and gold ink. We have the clear one autographs. That's going to be 60 cards, each numbered to 10 or less. And you've got the clear one dual autographs. There's 12 cards in that set, each numbered to 10 or less. That is the card that you see over on the right. We also have cut signatures. 23 cards, obviously one of ones of those. Some very good, fantastic names in that subset for the cut signatures. We also have the dual autographs with the nine card set, each numbered to 25 or less. And the next level autographs, those are go going to have 11 cards in that set, each numbered to 50 or less. And there are the parallels, the bronze ink, silver ink, and gold ink. 
And we have even more autographs. We have the Prime Performers autographs. There's going to be 72 cards in that set, each numbered to 299 or less with a bronze, silver, and gold parallel rainbow. You've got the Tier 1 autographs with a 27 card subset, each numbered to 199. Same parallel breakdown as before. We have the Tier 1 Talent autographs. That is going to be 72 card set, each numbered to 299 or less with the bronze, silver, and gold ink as well. And then finally, we have the triple autographs, which are only four cards in that set, each numbered to 10 or less. Then we go on to the autographed relics. First, we have the autographed prodigious patches. That's going to have 35 cards in that subset, each numbered to 10 or less, with a platinum one of one parallel. You can see what those look like over to the right. We have the autographed tier one relics, 50 cards in that subset, each numbered to 999 or less, with a dual patch and triple patch mm -hmm. rainbow. And then we have the cut signature relics. And those are going to be 25 cards in that set. Obviously, all a one of one. You get the cut signature plus a relic with it. Very, very cool cards there. We have the dual auto tier one relic book cards. 29 cards, each numbered to 10, with a parallel dual patch one of one. So very cool ones is there as well. We have more autographed relics. The perfect contact auto bat relics. There's 14 cards in that set, each number to five, with a parallel one of one. You can see the Mike Trout and what that looks like over there on the right. There's the signature tools back again for the 2021. 42 cards in that set, each number to one of one. The tier one autographed bat knobs, 39 cards, each one of one. Then you have the tier one autographed limited lumber cards 33 cards in that set they're all one of ones you also have the tier one uniform button relic autographed one of ones there 26 cards in that subset so with all that being said tons of autos tons of relics tons of auto relics what are the teams we should be buying into for breaks well i'm going to give you six with two sleepers and who I think the best team are, what team has the most value. My first team, the best team, I believe, is the Atlanta Braves. You can get 28 different autos out of Tier 1, and you can get 17 auto relics and 31 relics. Some huge names in there from the Braves' past and from their present. But if you're looking for the most autos, you're going to want to look the New York Yankees way. They've got 29 different autos and 22 auto relics. So just a ton of autos and auto relics. And they also have 28 relics, another very nice team. If you're looking for another solid choice, I would look at the Minnesota Twins. They've got 21 autos, 11 different auto relics and 26 relics. So the Minnesota Twins, not a lot of people are going to be looking that way, but I believe they're a very solid choice with some of the great Hall of Famers from Twins Pass. Definitely don't overlook the Twins. But I believe that the Phillies actually have the most value. There is some very big cards on the Phillies checklist. You've got 24 autos you can pull, 15 auto relics, and 20 relics that you can get in this set. The Phillies are going to be a great team in Tops Tier 1. My first sleeper, going to be the Chicago Cubs, and here's why. They've got 14 autos, so not as many autos as some of the other teams, and only 15 auto relics, but if you're looking for relics, they've got a ton of them. They've got 35 different relics, a lot of very nice names there. So uh, the Chicago Cubs, if you're willing to look past some of the autos and looking for some of those relics, I believe you're going to find some great ones with the Chicago Cubs. My second sleeper, going to be the Milwaukee Brewers. There's 10 autos and 15 auto relics and eight relics overall, but the Milwaukee Brewers checklist has some fantastic names on it, and not a lot of people are going to be looking the Milwaukee Brewers way. So look at the Milwaukee Brewers, go look at that checklist, and you'll see why I have them as a sleeper in here, even though their, their numbers are a little bit off compared to some of the top tier teams. Don't sleep on the Brewers. Take it from me. So what are the overall set positives for tops tier one? Well, first of all, it's a high-end set, but it has a low cost per auto. Each auto is actually valued way less than $100 per auto. So definitely, if you're looking for autos, it is not a bad set based upon the price. 
this year's design. It's clean, it's stylish, and the set checklist has a ton of recognizable names. Uh, there are plenty of rookie cards available in this set, and you're going to obviously get autos in a lot of them, some relics, but mostly autos from the rookies. So if you're looking for rookies, not a bad set to get into. There's also a very deep one-of-one one lineup. You've got decent odds, although they're still long, but you've got decent odds if you're opening a few boxes of actually hitting one of the one-of-ones, which would be a great hit. This also is a great set to buy singles off of in the secondary market. So if you can't get in, but you're saying, hey, I want that rookie auto, this would be a nice one to uh, look at to where you can get that rookie that you're searching for. And I believe that they won't be so overpriced that you can't get into it. So definitely a great singles set to buy into on the secondary market. And for me, I believe that they have some of the best relics and auto relics available throughout the whole collecting season at a fairly reasonable price compared to some of the uh, higher end, you know, uh, uh, diamond icons comes to mind. Um, much, much cheaper than that and some very nice relics that you can pull out of here. The other thing is there is a lower production run on this. It's hobby only. All of the cards are numbered. And I believe that the lower production run kind of adds to the exclusivity of tier one. So some very nice positives for this set, but there's also some negatives. As it's an all auto driven set, um, not all the boxes are going to be equal. For every Derek Jeter auto that is in tier one, there's also a Kent Herbeck. So there's a little bit of filler on the auto. So when you open up these boxes, it's possible that sometimes you're going to get much less of the value for the autos than you will in some other boxes. Kind of a high risk, high reward proposition. That's what tops tier one is. The other thing is being that there's no baseline set checklist, like no base set, it makes it kind of hard to tell what auto or relic you've actually hit. They kind of all blend in together. I don't know if that's a big deal to you, but to me, it seems like, you know, if you say prodigious patches, it should say that somewhere on the card, big and bold, and it doesn't do that. So there's very subtle differences between the hits, maybe not a big deal, but to me, sometimes I go some variation in what the cards look like would be nice. I would also like to see some crossover into prospects for this set, even if it wasn't a ton, but maybe one subset where you had some prospect autos to where we covered off on the gamut from prospects all the way to Hall of Famers. I feel like this set could could use that and it would add a little bit more value, but it never has had that. So it isn't designed to be that way. But my personal preference would be, hey, if we put just one auto subset for prospects, that'd be super cool. I also think that this set gets overlooked a little bit is it isn't quite a premium set, but it isn't an affordable set either. It lands in that no man's land space of a high box with low amount of cards, but not like a thousands and thousands of dollar box. So it kind of lands in the middle, kind of a more affordable set for people that are looking to get into the high end market, which isn't a bad thing, but it sometimes gets lost. It's not one of those ones that on the secondary market people are looking for first. And then the other thing is there's not a lot of new subset entries this year. Keep the set fresh. It's almost exactly like last year's. They've got like one new thing and it's just basically got a refresh design. So not a lot of innovation this year for Tops Tier 1, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but... I would like to see them kind of push the envelope, maybe get into that prospect stuff, um, see if there's something we could do with the relics to kind of keep those fresh and new, but not a lot of innovation in 2021. So that brings us to the one cent sensational set ranking. So how does tops tier one add up in 2021? Well, we break it down into 10 categories. So my first category is the appeal of the set. I went ahead and gave that a six. I believe that there are people out there that love tier one, myself being one of them. I, the fact that the autos are a little bit cheaper, I feel there's appeal there, but I think the fact that you only get three cards in a $200 box turns off a lot of collectors that maybe don't have that money to buy in. 
So overall, I think there is appeal there, but it's not as high as say like Bowman or something like that. So I give it a six. The base set checklist. Well, technically there isn't one. So I give it a four. However, there are some kind of standards like the breakouts and whatnot that you might consider kind of a base checklist. But I'm going to go ahead and give that a four simply because it doesn't really have one. But as you look at some of the other standard subsets, it's there. I'm going to go ahead and give it a four. For the inserts and relics, there are no inserts, but the relics are awesome. Um, so I go ahead and give that an eight. For the parallels and variations, I'm going to go ahead and give it a four. The parallels are basically the gold ink, but I feel like they could expand that rainbow a little more. But to keep the card production down, that's why they don't do it. But not a ton of variations. In fact, there are no variations, very few parallels. If you hit one of them, that's great. But overall, I'm going to go ahead and give that a four. For the auto checklist, it's filled with autos. I go ahead and give it a seven. But like I said, there are some filler autos. There's Kent Herbex in there. And there are some that maybe aren't Hall of Fame greats. And there are filler throughout the set. If you hit one of the big ones, you can get all your big names in there. You know, your Jeters, your Trouts, your Judges, whatever it is. There are big names in there. But for every one of those, there's one that you might say, well, don't understand why that would be in this set. For the pack odds and production, I went ahead and gave it a 6.5. It's a lower print run. I do believe that if you open a few boxes of these, you're going to find some really, really nice hits. However, you're also going to find a little bit of filler. So for the pack odds and production, I give it a 6.5. Card quality, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cards. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 9. Very nice thick card stock. Some of the relics are fantastic. Very hard to beat the quality of tops tier 1. The historical value, I'm going to give it a 6.5. It, again, it's not one of the first sets that you look for on the secondary market, but the autos do kind of hold true, and the relics also hold their own on the secondary market. So I'll give it a 6.5. For the artistic value, the cards this year have a very nice clean design. I like the design more than last year's, but again, not a lot of innovation this year. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7. And for cost value, this actually is one of the higher ratings I've given any set in 2021. I gave it a seven. I believe the fact that you can get two autos for less than 200 bucks and it's they're both going to be numbered. Plus, you get the relic card and your chances of hitting a low numbered are decent. Overall, it's not a bad box to buy into for only 200 bucks. When you think about the fact that, like, for example, top series one, the jumbos were north of $200. And those only had one auto and two relics. When you think about that and the autos weren't guaranteed to be numbered, you go this dollar for dollar is probably a better set to buy into if you're looking for autos than top series one. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and give it a seven. So when we add all of those up, how does tops tier one rank on the one cent sensational set ranking? Well, its final rating is a 64.5. So a lower end four star set, a very nice set to buy into. If you are looking for autos, this is a fairly inexpensive cost per auto. So look into that if that's what you're chasing. If you like relics, this is going to be a great set to get into. If you're a set collector, this is not one you're going to want to collect. There is no real set to collect here. We're just chasing hits with this one and not a lot of innovation. If you have last year's stuff, you're not you're not going to find a lot of new stuff this year. But overall, a very cool all numbered high end set that's affordable for the majority of collectors that are chasing autos and stuff like that. Lots of different rookie autos you can find in this set and the very 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 clean design. So I go ahead and give it a 4 star rating on the 1 cent sensational set rating. In 2020, the set scored a 64. So this is one of the first sets of the 2021 card season that has actually gone up a little bit. Most of them have come back a little bit on my rating in 2021, but this one ekes out its 64.5 over last year's score of 64. So tier one holding true, doing a solid job of keeping the autos alive and keeping a nice semi-affordable set for autos and hits for the masses. So tops tier one, a 64.5 in 2021. So with that being said, 
where do all of these sets rank to date and where does tier one land on the list? Well, it slides in at five out of 12. So it's the fifth set overall on my rankings with that 64.5 ranking. It comes in just over Panini Diamond Kings, which also rated a 64.5. Did not get my full review out on that because of a late checklist from Panini. Um, however, I go ahead and give it a 64.5. Bowman still running away with it at a 77.5. In Series 1, a very strong 70.5 as well. We still don't have a five-star set this season, but I believe we will get one at some point. Um, you can see how the top 10 rounds out there, and that is my Tops 2021 Tier 1 Set Guide in Review. So if you like these reviews, again, throw over to first for me. Hit that Like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. And in the meantime, I wish you guys the best of luck on your personal pack polls of Tops Tier 1. Be sure to comment below. Let me know what you're pulling. Let me know what you think of Tops Tier 1. And until next time, guys, take care of your family. Take care of your friends. Take care of your neighbors. And take care.